You may be wondering if this is a comparison between the Feel World F6 Plus monitor and the Andyson A6 Plus monitor, both of which, by the way, I absolutely adore. Now, why? Because they are exactly the same. So first I got this Feel World F6 Plus monitor from Feel World. Then I got the Andyson thinking that this would be better than this monitor and handle this one little problem that I had with this monitor. They're identical. I have this monitor mounted on the bracket they supply. Here's the monitor back. First thing I love is the battery compartment. I can either mount these Canon type batteries on here, the supplied Sony battery, which is really cool that they supply it, which slides in right here to the left hand side. I tend to use these much larger Sony NPF 970 batteries. I like to get a long time of it and it just securely locks in place. It doesn't come out and there's a release lock up here, which I really like because when you're using these larger batteries, you certainly don't want the thing to just fall out when you're using it. On the right hand side, you have an HDMI in which you could connect the HDMI from your camera to here. You could also use something like this Mars 300 that I have, which is a wireless receiver. You'd connect up the transmitter to the camera and the receiver here, and then you don't even have to keep this anywhere near the monitor, or you don't have to use a long cord, which is really cool. You have an HDMI out, which is unusual for a monitor of this low cost. You could run another cable to say another monitor. You could run that cable over to a larger TV so clients could monitor or you could monitor while you're using this. Or you could connect a wireless transmitter so you have the HDMI in from the camera right there. You have the wireless transmitter connected to the HDMI out. Then the camera operator can be here, see what he's doing and do what he needs to do. And the wireless transmitter would go to another receiver. That could be another monitor like this. That could be a large screen TV sitting off the side. It could really be anything that handles an HDMI signal. Now right here we have a DCI out. It's an eight volt. This is not how you power the unit. This is used so you could power the camera. So if you have a big chunky battery like I do, you could use that to power not only the monitor, but your camera. It doesn't come with the included adapter for the camera, which makes sense because there could be a Canon, an Olympus, a Sony, and you buy these little, they're like $10, $7, sometimes $15. You buy these little adapters. They come with a little dummy battery and you just put this in here, plug it into your camera, and then you're powering your camera and this monitor all off one battery, which is really convenient. Now flipping over to the right hand side, I do want to point out there's a little cold shoe mount here that you could mount lights, you could mount microphones, like if you had a DSLR or a camera here and you're using the cold shoe mount to mount the monitor and you want to mount a microphone, well, it's already built in. You don't have to get into these weird riggings and stuff like that. And inside this little cold shoe mount, that is also threaded with a quarter 20 adapter in there, which is really, really cool. Now, of course, you loosen up the screw. You can rotate the monitor 360 degrees, any angle you want, which is really cool because who wants a straight monitor at a straight viewing angle? A lot of monitors, simply you have a bottom screw, you mount them with a cold shoe mount to here, and you have no option. It's just it's sitting there, so you have to use some sort of rig or something and I like that it comes like this. You can also do other things where you undo the cold shoe mount. Let's say you're over here like this and you're doing an interview on someone and the camera operator sitting over here and you don't have this fancy screen over here. You could also do it to where you take this mount out, just turn it this way and then what happens is you're looking, the camera operator can actually see what he's monitoring over here while the person over there is being interviewed. Now let's get our little lady in focus here. There's our little lady with her little hat on sitting back there. To turn on the monitor, you simply hold down this button, long press, green comes on, shows you the Andyson A6 Plus, it finds the signal and it's on. This is a 4K monitor and like all the monitors you get, again, this is a around a $200 monitor, you're not gonna get a 
4K screen on here, that would be ridiculous. What it does is it accepts everything up to a 4K 60 signal into this monitor. The monitor itself is a 1080 monitor, which I mean, come on, for a monitor this size, 1080 is actually kind of overkill. They usually come in like 720 or something like that. Green light shows it's powered. If it were red when it's off, there is off. There's a slight little red light here. It shows that there's actually a battery connected. I've had this thing on for days. It doesn't draw enough power to really take a lot out of the battery, but I like to see that. It shows me what's going on and then I have a battery on the back in case I'm just walking in here. Let's turn the monitor back on. And then we have our little lady back there. Now, as I said, this rotates, but I wanna show you a few things. On the top here, we have the on off switch. Also notice this button, it says touch. We'll get to that in a moment. Then we also have a menuing system here where I can push and toggle through the menu so I don't have to rely on the touch screen itself. It does have a quarter 20 on the top, which is beautiful. If I happen to want to mount it upside down with this or use a different type of arm or something to where it's hanging down this way, I have that option, which is awesome. Then on the bottom, you'll see you have an SD card slot. That's for not only updating the firmware, which gives me confidence that if something changes or there happen to be bugs in the system or something like that, I can update the firmware. The DC in, which is 12 volt, this I love because when I'm in a studio like this, I usually work off AC power. I don't have to mess around with batteries and recharging. The AC adapter doesn't come with this. I have links below. It's like seven or eight dollars for this adapter, which is really cool. Additionally, you have a headphone jack here. So you can monitor your system through this headphone jack using your headphones. Great feature. All right, back to our little lady here. My favorite feature about this, of course, which makes this the killer monitor, is the fact that it's a touch screen. I can still touch these, and I can still go through menus as I need to, turn things on and off, which is great. That's fine, I like that. I double tap over here on the left, I get my menus and they come up directly, which is awesome. There's everything you could need in here. Histograms, focus assist, audio meters, zebras on and off, monochrome, false color. You have markers with the plus. If you want a grid, safety markers, you can turn on and off, center markers, uh, the marker mat, the color, everything else. Over here, we have all sorts of stuff, the scan mode, the uh, aspect ratios, there's a ton of them, anamorphic mode. Uh, you can flip it horizontally and vertically if you need to. How many times it zooms up when you use the zooming knob. Uh, freeze frame. Over here you have all sorts of this RGB thing. LUTs. You can load LUTs using the SD card as I showed you. You can also use the built-in LUTs. You can set the color temperature of the monitor, whether the backlight's on or off, how bright the backlight is, the brightness of the monitor itself, the contrast, the saturation, the hue, everything else. Of course, under the system, you have some more settings. For instance, what does the wheel do? Backlight, your different languages, whether the transparencies are on or off. This screen turns off too much for me, too quick. So I'm gonna turn the on screen and I'm gonna bump this thing up to 25 seconds. You have the volume that you can set. That's the volume of what this outputs. You can reset the whole monitor. And here's your firmware that says version 1.07 that you can update. You can also go back that way, or you can double tap, bring up your menus, tap and they're away. You can also use a top to bring up the menus. I love the touch screen. The other thing that's cool is you can set what these do, like for instance, if I pull down on the left, I can set the dimness or I can set how intense the screen is. It's really bright and nice. If I pull up and down on the left, I can set my audio levels that I'm monitoring through my camera and pull that back down. The other cool feature is I can drag up and I have all these functions that I can set which are assignable. For instance, I can go into false color and I can turn that on and I could get my false color, whichever type I want, I would use this one. Like around her face, I can tell it's way overexposed for this shot, it's in the yellow area. The reason for that is because she doesn't have like a really normal face, she's a doll. But I would be trying to expose for a face in this area. That's really, really handy. Again, you just hit this, 
turn that back off. We got all sorts of stuff. We have focus assist on. You can see, I don't know if you can see that, but the focus assist kind of zings these little lines around here. So when we play focus, well, let's move the focus and see what happens. You'll see she's out of focus. And as the camera focuses, you'll see how her eyeballs and stuff get little lines around it. There's some little dots, which shows you've nailed perfect focus in case you're manually focusing. Very, very neat having these bottom buttons, histograms, whether you want the audio meter on or off. And there comes the audio meter. So I have it turned all the way down so you could monitor on screen the audio meters. Let's turn that off. Monochrome, you can do gray, red, green, blue, different type like for this situation. Good way to check your exposure and what you have there. Then you also have safety markers. You can do a ton of safety markers like, okay, I want a certain safety marker that I'm using, or I want to see safety markers for the aspect I'm shooting. There's 16 to 10, there's 16 to nine, there's four to three, the old television area, five to four. And then of course we have like these anamorphic modes. So now you don't have to put tape across the screen or something like that. Very, very handy. Let's turn those back off. Another touch brings it away. This is really, really, really awesome. The best part of it, the touch screen, the assignable buttons and everything else. I love this thing. I love both of them. Now, the only single solitary difference that I have found between the other Field World F6 monitor I showed you, the 4K one, and the Andy Sin 4K one, including what it comes in, what it looks like, these bars, the HDMI cable that comes, the battery, the charger, everything is exactly the same. The only two differences I found between those two monitors, I mean right down to how this handle is machined and everything else, are one, the labels on the screen, and two, the carry carton that they come with. This thing comes with the monitor itself, this short little bezel, which is fine, it's nice to have that on there, it also comes with a hood mount, which is really great, especially if you're using it out in sunny weather. That way you can move the monitor around and be able to see it. It comes with an HDMI cable. And surprisingly enough, for around a 200 something dollar unit, it does come with a basic Sony NPF battery and the battery charger and its cord to boot, which is a really nice touch. That means you get this monitor and you're able to just rock and roll with this thing. I love the case it comes in, it's zippered very nicely, it looks nice. The top conveniently fits all the pieces and the parts and everything else that you would have with this monitor. The little flip up flap protects the monitor screen and of course you have an elastic piece in here which keeps the monitor safe and secure from bumping around. Really nice case, really nice to have a case, I love it when I get a case with a product that I can cart things around with and that protect it. I can easily mount this lens hood, which has Velcro on it. It just sticks on like that. And that way I now have light and things blocked away when I'm shooting outside. It's respectable size. I like that it isn't one of these just short little bezels that they call the lens hood. It comes out enough to keep the sun from hitting. Or if you're working in a studio like this, where you have a lot of light shooting at this thing, this can block it off and it's really, really handy. Good touch on both these monitors. Now, the only thing I don't like about this monitor, and I believe this is because of the touch screen. You'll see it on your phones. You'll see it on so many different types of touch devices. So this isn't really a, a thing I'm like dinging them on. It's just part of the technology. Let me just show you this. Now I'm really stress testing it and I just wanted to sh simulate this. But the thing about it is there's a significant glare on this screen. When I turn this thing over here, it's really glary. It really reflects a lot. The only drawback I can see to that is if you're outside, you don't have the lens hood and there's no way to get around it. You don't have one of those matte screens on here like some of those monitors. But to me, I don't care. Having the touch screen capability for me having the hood to be able to cut out the glare and everything else, hands down, I would take this over a matte screen to be able to get these touch capabilities any day of the week. Now, not every monitor is perfect and these aren't either. There's one distinct problem I wanna make you aware of. I've had this work with all my DSLRs. 
on all my different modes as the specs show and everything else. But this particular camera alone, this is a Canon XF 400. I don't know why these monitors don't work with it. I've tried to work with Feel World and others trying to find out they couldn't figure it out. I don't know if it's the settings in this XF400 camera, I'm doing something wrong. Just in case you happen to have this particular camera, not some other camera, let me show you what I found. I have to be shooting this camera at 60p. My current resolution is at 1920, 1280, no problem. Uh, 1920 by 1080, it's just a higher bit rate. And then my high bit rate of 150 megabits per second. Here's my 4K. That's great, and that works in all those cases. Do I have a problem shooting at 60 frames per second? Not really. When I change it to 30 frames per second, I get no signal. I've tried turning the camera off, turning it back on. I've tried turning everything down and turning it back on. But when I'm at 30 frames per second, it gives me no signal. 4K, 30 frames per second, no signal. 4K, 1920 by 1080, no signal and I think I get a signal in 720 in this case. I do. If I'm in 30, they don't drive the monitor for some reason. Now on 24 frames per second, in 720, I get this, I go to 1080, I get nothing. I've let it sit here forever to see if it would sync up, turn it all off, back on, etc. I go to my 4K, it still doesn't see the signal. The only way I can get a signal in 1080 or 4K is by setting this particular camera to 60 frames per second. I'd love to figure that out. Just to be fair, here's the Feel World monitor. You can see it right there. Again, it has the same stuff on this side, the same stuff on this side, it has the same bad multi-function batteries, it has the same SD card, and in like everything on these monitors are exactly, exactly, exactly the same. The only difference is the fact that this says Feel World and this says Andy Sin. In fact, let's do this because this will be fun. And just to show you what I'm talking about, here's the HDMI out coming from the Andy Sin to the exact same Feel World. Let's turn that on. I'm being quite careful because this is just kind of sitting on top of here. But you'll notice I basically have the same thing. I can double tap, get menus, double tap, get menus. It works just fine, which means not only does the HDMI work just fine, but both these monitors, again, as you'll see, they are exactly the same. So which monitor would I recommend? The Field World F6 Plus or the Andy Sin A6 Plus? I'd recommend both of them to anybody. It's a best buy for 2019. I hope that helps, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Let's just leave it alone. Whoa.